Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Greg Hoffman. Um, I am the owner of Greg Hoffman Consulting. I'm an outsourced program manager, and the majority of my programs are in the ShareSell network. We also have programs in Commission Junction and Pepper Jam. But for the last eight years, uh, I've been managing programs in ShareSell. So I decided to come up with a presentation um, just talking about some of the best practices that we have uh, and hopefully give you some tips and tricks on how to um, navigate the uh, interface and use some of their advanced uh, tools. So we'll start in there. Uh, basically what we're going to talk about is uh, the dashboard layout, uh, the types of affiliates that we work with, uh, application tips, uh, tagging for organization, terms of service, advanced commission rules and leapfrog, and possibly some secrets that uh, we could divulge uh, using the interface. So let's talk about the dashboard. Um, how many managers, merchants, advertisers are here that use the ShareSell interface? Let's just, okay. So when you log in every day, we have a different dashboard. We have an OPM dashboard that uh, is completely different. But if we wanted to log into one specific merchant, um, for many years, we couldn't do anything with the dashboard. They started... Uh, they, they customized it a few years ago that we could move these boxes around and add boxes, delete boxes. Um, so a while ago, I sat down and, and had some time and looked at every single program that I managed and wanted to create the dashboard the way that it would help me. Uh, because we had the default dashboard has lots of useless boxes and things that you probably don't care about. So. This is the way my dashboard looks in every single program. Um, it's just a, an easy template, and I, the number one thing is the to-do list. You want to uh, look at that to-do list every single day. You want to make sure that there's nothing on there that you know, demands action. Um, so I've got that box up there right in the top left. Uh, the, the middle one is the program essentials. It will tell you all of the, the numbers that you care about and the things that you can tell affiliates uh, that will help promote your program to them. And that includes, um, you know, it'll tell you the, the total affiliates, but it'll also talk about uh, the EPC for that month, uh, for the last week, and um, there's, you know, contact information, things like that. So. Um, I, I just like the way this is set up. The, the next one is the, what is it called? The program vitals. So it basically gives you uh, charts on sales transactions and what is going on uh, for, is that seven days or? You can, you can change that around. Um, it's just, the dashboard is there for you just to, to a starting place. So organize the dashboard the way you want to. There's so many different configurations. You can have it as four columns, you can have it as five columns, one column, whatever. But just put in the boxes that, are matter, that matter to you and that you will care about on a daily basis. So if you have any questions, I'm gonna say this all the time, if you have any questions, contact ShareSell. They have um, later. Um, but questions specifically about the dashboard or anything related to uh, your program, reach out to ShareSell and ask them questions. Uh, they are very happy to answer those questions. And it's simple things like this. If you have questions about how to move things in your dashboard and make it easier for you, they'll answer those easily. All right. This is one that all new managers, it's hard for them to grasp. There are different models of affiliates. Um, we're going to talk about a few of them. So when you launch on ShareSell, the first applications you're going to see are all coupon sites. I personally only work with a handful of coupon sites. So those first 80 coupon sites that apply to your program, I would have probably naturally declined them just because I'm, I've got personal relationships with a handful of those affiliates, those coupon guys. I'm only going to work with them. Everybody else, I don't work with. Um, so Retail Me Not is the biggest. They're also, uh, you know, one of the most controversial. I have not been a Retail Me Not fan for most of my career, but I have learned that they're a necessary evil. And so we have one person at Retail Me Not that we talk to on a weekly basis, sometimes a daily basis. And we tell her this is what we're going to 
uh, this is how we're going to manage the program. This is what the way the, the, the landing pages are going to look. And if you don't comply with our request, then we're, you're not going to be in our programs. So with coupons, they're, they're the ones that are going to join your programs, but you, they're the ones that you have to monitor and police on a daily basis. Um, deals. So it's still related to coupons, but the deal sites like Slick Deals are a different model. They're going to promote a deal that is great today and might not exist tomorrow, but they can sell mass quantities in the next couple of hours. Retail Me Not is going to have 100 sales over the month. Slick Deals might have 500 sales today. So it's still a different model. You have to look and you have to learn. Every time you get an application, you have to learn what type of model it is. There are loyalty sites in the ShareSell network. Good Shop is one of those that we work with. Um, we, we only work with them through the ShareSell network because they have a toolbar and they're not allowed to use the toolbar when they're in ShareSell. So it's a safe bet to work with them. Sub affiliates. Right now, it's a, a pain point for us. Uh, we are having issues with some of the sub-affiliate networks, uh, but Skimlinks is, is a good uh, example of them. Uh, it's sometimes low volume, and basically what a sub-affiliate network is, uh, we approve Skimlinks as an affiliate, and affiliate or Skimlinks will go out and recruit hundreds of other affiliates to use their link because those affiliates don't understand affiliate marketing and they're just going to put some code on their page to monetize those keywords and, and those products. Um, my problem with sub-affiliate networks is sometimes I will kick a coupon guy or a paid search violator out of my program and they could easily just start using skim links. So what we have done is we have personal relationships with those affiliates, Skimlinks, Vigilinks. Uh, we're now going to be working with Prosperant. And so what we're going to make sure is there's no coupons, there's no toolbars, there's no paid search guys. So you can talk to these affiliates and tell them, these sub-affiliate networks, tell them exactly who you want to work with and what type of traffic you want to see from them. So you don't have to accept the, what they just give you naturally. You have to go in there, dig down, and make sure that they're a good affiliate to work with and they have good sub-affiliates. Uh, the next one would be tools. And my best example would be FMTC. So we love them because they work with coupon sites and basically they're an aggregator of coupons that are put through the, the network and we do not have to police those coupon sites that are subscribers to FMTC because all of the coupons that are going to go on that site are authorized through the network. Retail Me Not is not a subscriber to FMTC, which is a huge pain point because we have to go in there and talk to Retail Me Not. You have a bad coupon code on there, you have to take it off, and we need it done today. Uh, with those coupon sites that are subscribers to FMTC, we don't have to worry about them anymore, so we're very happy. Um, there's plenty of other, t other tools. Uh, we just we talked to Prosperant this morning. Prosperant is kind of a mix between um, a, a data feed aggregator and a sub-affiliate network. Um, so we're going to be talking to them. We're also big fans of Pop Shops because a lot of our data feed affiliates use Pop Shops and they, use, they just love that service because it's been around for so long. Um, the next would be paid search affiliates. Now there are going to be lots of paid search affiliates that join your program just like coupon sites. Um, I have narrowed it down to two. There are only two paid search affiliates in the world that I will work with because I have personal relationships with them again and I can say you yesterday you I, I found an ad for this merchant. I don't like it. I need you to change it and they'll say okay. Um, there are also these two paid search affiliates will not only, they'll, they'll buy the brand names because it's easy money, but they reinvest most of those funds that they earn commissions on your trademark name into the long tail. And so merchants that are working with these paid search affiliates don't have their own paid search efforts, and these affiliates are spending their own money. Uh, they are making money on trademark, but they're also making the merchant more money long term because they're reinvesting those funds. Like I said, I've only found two that are honest enough and transparent enough to 
give us really good customer service and make sure that uh, the programs are, are well run. So I don't have any examples for the next ones, but uh, these are my favorite uh, types of affiliates. Uh, these are the ones that we work hard on a daily basis to find for every single program, and that would include bloggers, review sites, social affiliates, general content, and niche content. These are the affiliates that are going to work harder than I believe the other models because they're going to Put, they're, they're passionate about what they're writing about, what they're talking about. Um, you know, and I'll give a good example. There's some affiliates in this room that are review sites for one of my uh, wine club uh, programs. And I know the hard work that they put into the reviews. And so I want to make sure that they are paid the most uh, because they are bringing us new customers. And I know that they are, you know, really doing a good job. They're spending a lot of time, many, many hours to put together the reviews, the videos, the writing aspect of it, uh, and then sharing it all over social networks. They're doing a lot more than an automated or one person at Retail Me Not that's just putting a coupon code up. So Retail Me Not is going to make less money than my review uh, bloggers. Um, so... But we're always trying to find those type of affiliates. That's a goal for an OPM, at least my agency, is to reach out and find the really good, hardworking affiliates that are in this list of bloggers, review sites, social. Um, I threw general content in there because there's so many, uh, when you manage programs, you're going to look at affiliates, and you're going to look at their domains and say, where do they fit? It's a good looking site. They might be able to sell my products but I really don't know what they do. So we just throw those in a general content. Some of them actually will become good affiliates. Some of them might be one of those that just kind of is inactive in your program forever and they are not responsive. They're not going to get back to you. Um, the best ones we could possibly find are niche content. Uh, we just inherited a program recently that had nothing but toolbars, coupons, and loyalty sites in the program. And the previous managers had declined 120 niche content sites that included bloggers, reviews, everything. So the previous managers only wanted the easy sales from the coupon guys. They didn't want to have to take time to work with the hardworking affiliates. And so now we have a pool of 120 really good affiliates that we can draw from and show that we can really change this, this program and, and switch it around. So I love looking at the affiliate models and understanding and knowing who they are, and it helps to come to shows like this to meet some of these affiliates, and we've had some good meetings this, this week, um, to just understand who they are and, and how they're going to represent you. So I think it's very important. That's why I spend so much time on the affiliate models. You have to spend time and figure out who they are. All right, so applications. Um, I am very diligent about my applications unless I'm traveling. Um, so I know that uh, they're stacking up right now and I haven't gotten to them for the last couple of days. Uh, but I uh, typically approve or decline within 24 hours. And I've seen where other managers will say within 48 hours or within seven days. And I've had... Um, People complain. I've had affiliates that I've, I've been friends with, and they'll say, can you help me out? I've uh, ap applied for this program three weeks ago, and the manager's not talking to me, and I can't get approved. And I'm like, well, that's not something I can help. And I've also seen on Twitter where affiliates are complaining to ShareSale, saying we've been waiting for weeks and weeks and months, and we can't get these people to approve us. If you're a manager and you can go in there and approve or decline within 24 hours, that's what you should be doing. Get in there and, and just give them an answer one way or another, even if it's a decline. I sit at my computer at my home office all day, and I will hit them within minutes of them coming in because I'm just there, and I'm in the ShareSell interface. I'll see the, the email come through. I'll click over to the dashboard. I'll see one pending application and I'll hit it as soon as I can. I don't let them stack unless, of course, I'm here. So um, little things just in case you don't know. Uh, a limited status, when you're looking at the application, a limited status versus full status. The affiliate has or has not earned their first check from ShareSale. So it, when you're looking at it, and it says limited, 
That means they haven't earned anything from the network. I don't know if they just joined the network or they've been in the network for five years and they're just not very good at what they do. So, and I know for a fact that there are affiliates out there that have been in ShareSell for years and just have not found that right sweet spot and they still haven't earned their first check. Even if their commissions, they, uh, the, limited pay, the, the minimum payout is $50. So they may have earned a commission two years ago for $5, but they haven't earned that next 45 to actually get the check sent. So if you see limited status, just, you know, it's a little red flag. You, you, you have to make the determination of whether or not you want to work with them. And there's other ways to look at it, but just know limited, they haven't checked, or they haven't gotten their check, full they have. Another thing on the application is read the feedback. On the application, it'll actually say if there's feedback. If it's negative one, that means another manager, maybe me, has said they did something against my terms of service and I want everyone else to know about it. Um, if you look at it and it says negative eight, that's pretty bad. And, and I've seen up into the, the negative tens and elevens. And those are the ones that are repeated offenders. They, they're not even going to read your terms of service. They're just going to, if they're approved, they're going to do whatever they want until someone catches them and kicks them out. So whenever I find uh, someone that is violating my trademark or trademark plus rules, uh, where you know they're out there in paid search and they're interfering with my merchant's paid search efforts, um, I'm going to kick them out. And I have a no mercy rule. If you are caught violating my terms, you're out and you're probably going to have your sales voided. Uh, you know, I was taught by ShareSell and other managers many years ago that I have to give warnings and, you know, we have to reach out to them. You know, it never worked. I did that so many times, it just wasn't worth it. So now it's no mercy rule, and every time I do it, I never hear back from, from them because they knew they were wrong, and they knew they were going to get caught, so they don't argue. So another thing, read the affiliate description and the application notes. Um, you will, you will, most of them have an affiliate description. It's usually one or two sentences. Um, and, and it might be relevant, it might not be relevant, but they are, if you really look at the application, there could be some application notes. And that is where, when they are applying to your specific program, they could say, I want to join the California Wine Club because I have a plan. And sometimes I mistakenly miss those application notes and I will hit decline because I didn't like what I saw on the feedback or the affiliate description. And then they'll come back and say, wait a minute, I gave you a plan. And then I'll look at it and go, oh, yep, didn't read the notes. I'm very sorry. You're, you're back in the program. So be diligent, read the description, read the application notes, and encourage, if you're going to recruit anyone into your program, Tell them to put in the application notes, hey, I talked to you yesterday, and, or I talked to Greg, and Greg said, please approve me. That works with my team. It doesn't happen very often uh, because they always forget to put in the application notes, but it is very helpful that you, you tell them that they can actually add that little note in there to let them in. Um, they are, there is also room for them to put in their additional sites. Um, and as well as their main site. So look at, look at all the sites. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll notice that there's a general content site, there's a niche content site completely in a different industry, and then they'll list an adult site. And if you don't see anything that's relevant to your program, then you, know, you might want to decline them because once they are approved, they can put your promotions on any of the sites they own. And then you would have to go back and find them uh, in the future and say, I don't really want to be on that site. So if you have any problems with any of their other sites, you could reach out to them and say, hey, if you are approved, I want to make sure that you're not going to put my promotions on that site. You can do that. Um, they just don't always get back to you. Um, and also, um, if you, it, ShareSell is concerned about privacy of the affiliates. And so it's, there is no really good recruiting tool. Uh, they have some, uh, a beta test right now for it, but uh, they don't want to give you direct access to the affiliate's email. That's just something that we have to live with, and, but there's ways around it. If you want to talk to the affiliate, you can 
click the button, contact this affiliate, and it'll go through the share cell interface. If you want to copy yourself on that email, when you hit send, you get that affiliate's email in that reply. So if you want that affiliate's email, that's how you have to do it. You have to contact them through the ShareCell network, and the ShareCell does monitor your emails. They want to make sure that you're not promoting other networks, you're not cross-promoting, you're not uh, crossing any lines. Uh, so they will look at your emails, and they just want to protect affiliates as much as possible. So you want to talk to an affiliate, contact them through ShareCell. All right, so those are my tips about applications. Um, tags, so hopefully some of you are using your tags or hopefully all of you are using tags. Um, the way we do it um, is we will look at, uh, we'll tag all the coupon sites, we'll tag all the niche content sites and we'll list it um, as a, a content. So it's a, if it's a wine affiliate, the niche content, it's just gonna say wine. Uh, if they're a VIP, uh, we'll have a VIP tag. Top sellers, uh, the five it would be uh, five, 10, or 15. That's the commission that they make. If you make your, um, if you pay your affiliates different, different models, uh, which we do, then you, you tag them as a coupon, and then you tag them what you're gonna pay the coupon affiliates. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to use the tag system. Um, you know, I've got review, bonus, paid search, inactive, only talks to Cindy, which is a thing, and then uh, <laughs> dead metaphorically. Um, so it's, um, and yeah, with the Cindy thing, there are certain affiliates that just respond to her better. We did some scientific tests several years ago, and I would send a message, and I'm like, hey, I would give them this great offer, great content in the, in the email, very energetic, and they wouldn't respond to me. So a week later, Cindy would send the exact same email, but it says Cindy instead of Greg, and they answered her. And then she had them on the phone in the next five minutes, and they're best friends. So there are just a certain amount of, and, and I would say that they were probably mostly bloggers at that time. So female bloggers back five years ago didn't want to talk to me because my name was Greg. They would rather talk to Cindy. So it's true. Yes, Todd? Male bloggers, too. Male bloggers, okay. <laughs> Um, Just everyone basically. Right. All right, so uh, the little uh, picture over on the side, um, it'll show you uh, the approved, not approved, uh, and then a, a description of the, you know, show you what the tags look like. So that affiliate, that is a real affiliate, we took a screenshot, uh, they're making 5% and they're tagged as a coupon. And there's no limit on how many tags you can put on there and affiliates do not see the tags, so you can call them whenever you want. <laughs> which has been fun. Um, Todd, I'm gonna relabel all yours. All right, so terms of service. We're, we're gonna go over this real quick. Um, uh, I, I think it's important for all managers to have some type of terms of service. The, I want you to hear this. Affiliates that join ShareCell are bound to the ShareCell terms of service. So all of the legalese that they sign up, they agree to when they join the network, most of that, they're just, it's teaching them how to, you know, how, not to screw the network, basically. Um, so your terms of service do not have to be filled with legalese. You can use human terms and say, you cannot do this, but you can do that. You can't do this. Make it a human paragraph. You know, it's, this says terms of service for the California Wine Club. The term of this agreement will begin upon acceptance of your affiliate application and will end when it terminated by either party. Very simple stuff. Um, we're telling them that leapfrog technology is in place. Uh, last click attribution is no longer the sole method of deciding which affiliate earns the commission. Coupon affiliates that close the transaction in the clip stream for content affiliates share commissions with those content affiliates. So that's an advanced commission rule that we put in there, but we put it in just very basic English, just telling affiliates what they can and cannot do. There are so many affiliate programs out there in ShareCell that have nothing in the terms of service. If you want to go back and 
kick out an affiliate or you want to void transactions, you need to give them reasons why you did that. And those reasons need to be backed up in these terms of service. Because if you went in there and just told an affiliate, I'm gonna void all your commissions because I don't like the way you're promoting it. They can come back and legally challenge you because you didn't have anything in your terms of service. They're governed by the network on you know bigger legal issues, but you have to have your rules, your house rules, in the terms of service. So, you know, I, I know lots of uh, managers that work for larger corporations, Marty, um, that probably have to put this through their legal department. And, you know, they don't have the, the luxury that we do. But managers like us, we can make up our own rules and we just have to follow them. So do something with your terms of service. All right, we'll talk quickly about advanced commission rules and the LeapFrog technology. Um, they started this several years ago, and we absolutely love it. We implement it as often as we can. Um, we have it in place with some of our biggest clients. Uh, the new rules that share us have are incredibly flexible, and there are rules that are beyond LeapFrog that we're now going to be investigating. Uh, if you have any questions about advanced commission rules, please talk to ShareSell. So just go to them and say, I, I'm worried about coupons taking credit for all of my sales. What can I do about that? LeapFrog is the answer or the next level that they're working on now. Uh, basically what we do is we will split the commissions. Um, the default commission is 10%. Uh, a tagged content affiliate is gonna get 7% uh, because they brought us that customer and so I want them, I know they're, they're the hardworking ones, but they didn't close the sale. The customer went and used a coupon at the last minute. So I wanna give credit to the, the, the coupon affiliate because they closed the sale. They did their job, they were there, they had a good coupon, they, but I want both of them to get commission. So they're sharing the sale. Um, basically the, you know, the coupon site's gonna get 3%, and the content site's gonna get 7%. You can come up with whatever rule you want. This is just the way we do it. Um, it could be structured a million different ways. Um, if you wanted to do a bonus after the first five sales in a month, you can come up with a way that is automated, where eight years ago, when I wanted to bonus someone, I had to do it manually. I'd have to go in there and I'd have to count up all the, the sales transactions in the month and compare it to everybody else and, or see who the new affiliates were and who qualified for the bonus and then I have to do all of that manually. Now, through the advanced commission rules, you can do this automatically. So there's, there's limitless things you can do for the commission rules. If you've got questions, ask share. So. Um, you can even bonus on specific SKUs in a data feed. We've done that. Uh, I think we've got that in the California Wine Club uh, where one um, product is worth more to them than all the other products. So we have told affiliates, if you sell, us, if you sell this one product, we're going to give you a lot more money because we really want you to bring us those new customers. Yes, you have the link. Shut up. <laughs> it's the premiere. Premier Series. So if you promote the Premier Series, you're going to get paid more. You're going to get um, a bonus based on that SKU. Um, so there's just a little, you know, you, you can see up there how um, uh, ShareSell has it. It's, it's not intuitive when you first look at it. You're going to have to talk to ShareSell. Just say, look, guide me through the, the first set. Help me write my first set of rules. This is what I want to do. Can you just spend a couple minutes and tell me how to do it? And they'll give you the formula, and then you hit enable. All right, so final secrets. There's, I, and I did ask Brian uh, for any really good secrets. Uh, he just never got back to me because he's too busy. Um, but I want you to use this one. So everybody take a picture of this so you can get the... Um, uh, you can get this uh, presentation through Affiliate Summit, but I was given this link by someone at ShareSell eight years ago, and I have used it religiously over the last eight years. And even Tiffany at ShareSell forgot that it exists. So there are Easter eggs, and I have not uncovered all the Easter eggs at ShareSell, but this is a good one. So it's the M-AF find. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I don't know who's got a paid search ad out in um, Google, 
It's there's someone's pointing to the California Wine Club. I don't know. It's an affiliate. I just don't know who it is. So I'm going to open up my ShareSell login. I'm going to make sure that I'm logged into that specific merchant. I'm going to click this m-affind link. It's going to open up another window. Then I'm going to go back to Google and I'm going to click on that ad and I'm going to follow that ad all the way through to the merchant landing page. Then I'm going to go back to the affind page and it's going to say click to determine the last click. And you click it and it will say this is the affiliate that is taking credit for that last click. So I can easily identify the affiliate that is violating my terms of service. And if they're in the program, I can deal with them right now. Um, so I just think that's a cool little tool. Um, I've kept it in my back pocket and I've used it uh, a lot. Um, the next thing, this is, this is fairly complicated. Um, it's using the API for custom reporting. Uh, the reporting at ShareSell is great, um, but if you have needs for custom reporting, and we do as an agency, uh, because we want it uniform and we have every client wants something a little bit different, so we can create a custom report, uh, but it has to come from the API. I am not a programmer. Uh, I started out as a journalist and a writer and a PR guy, and there's no programming uh, knowledge in my head at all. So I hired a Daniel, and he's in the front seat. Um, so Daniel is my programmer, and Daniel has uh, gone in there and used the API for ShareSell to uh, pretty much revolutionize my agency. Uh, we, I used to spend five to six days a month doing reports for all of my clients and Daniel can do it in five minutes. Uh, so, and that's just by pushing a button. Um, so if you've got a programmer, if, you've, if you know programming, talk to ShareSell, tell them that you wanna start using the API and, uh, and definitely you know, look at all the different applications, all the things that you can do. Um, last thing is the monthly payment review, tracking number summary. Um, this is only a report that is live uh, during uh, the 15th and the month, 15th and the 19th of the month. Um, if you are worried about duplicate or repeat orders, there is this little um, report that exists that they don't really publicize. Um, but you pull that report and it will tell you that you have duplicate sales, you have repeat sales. And if you do, obviously you have to figure out why you have repeat sales. And it will give you the opportunity to click on those sales and void the repeat. Um, so if you've got any concerns, and maybe it's, uh, um, it's, it's sometimes as simple as the customer is clicking back to the, uh, to the shopping cart and it refires the pixel. So there's a way ShareSell can work with that to avoid that, and there's a way the merchant can work on fixing that issue. But it is something that has been a known issue for many years that you get repeat tra transactions. So, but there's a report, you can find out if it's happening. And that's it, thank you for coming. We've got plenty, we've got a couple minutes for questions. Um, so if anyone has anything, I think you had one in the, in the back earlier. But she's on her phone, so. <coughs> ah, yes, you. Uh, oh, yeah, it was Hang on, let's talk into the microphone so we can catch it for the oh, video. Sorry. Uh, on the dashboard, I didn't know it, whenever there's the, the little graph, the line graph, it always has clicks, and I don't care about clicks right there. I want to see sales first. Is there a way to make that pop up first? Well, do you have sales? Yes. Okay. Um, because I have seen programs where there's no sales, and all it shows is clicks. Um, that's a good question, and I'm sure there's a way to change it. There's probably, um, in one of the tabs, there's probably a way that you can change it, but it might be a default to look at clicks. Um, I would think that if it was sales, the default would be sales. Um, I have sales, so okay. I, I just have to click over there every time, and then I, I see it. And that's a good question. Just, just ask ShareSell if there's a okay. way to make that a default. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so what is your relationship with the share of sale? Uh, do you and, and your compensation? Does that come from their normal commission or I you? I do not work for share of sale. I am not a share of sale employee. But Brian did buy me pizza once. Um, <laughs> so um, basically, I get paid by the merchants. 
Uh, merchants that uh, don't have the time or they don't know how to manage their own programs. So I am an outsource manager. Um, I do not have any relationship with Sharesell except that I'm loyal to their network just because I like it the best. Yeah, is there any way to actually search affiliates within the Sharesell network? No. Okay. Absolutely not. Now, there is a beta way uh, to look at uh, some affiliates that might be relevant uh, and some sites that could be good affiliates. So you'd have to talk to ShareSell and ask them about the beta recruiting efforts. Um, yeah, still, I think it was called affiliate invitations or something like that. I, yeah, I'm not sure. But we, we are testing it and we are um, still working. They're still working on it. What would you say is the big, your biggest reason that you kick out affiliates for? Is it the, the trademark search? Trademark search, uh, probably. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's biggest. Um, Can I do one more? Second? Yeah, go ahead. It, it, so you only use ShareSell? No, that's I, why we I, work with other networks. Okay. I just like ShareSell the best. All right. So is there a reason why you like ShareSell over the others, like ClickBank or Commission Junction or anything else? I know almost all of the employees. I have one person that I talk to um, as a manager. Um, I just, I, and, and they do take an ethical stand. They do not allow toolbars. Uh, so I am not a fan of toolbars. If I'm in another network like Commission Junction, I still won't work with toolbars. Uh, so it's nice that ShareSell does not work with the adware and toolbar and the affiliates that I don't want in my programs. Anyone else? All right. Well, thank you very much. Please fill out your comments.